Okay, so now in this next section, what I want to talk about is taking that rough drawing that we just that we just did and we found our composition and all that. Now it's time to refine it. Let's get let's start working some of the details in there. And this is going to become the framework for the rest of the painting. I always call it the, you know, the architectural plans. You can't build a house without the plans. And in my mind, you can't create a great painting without the plans, which is a nice drawing. So let's go ahead and start refining. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create a new layer right there on top of our rough drawing layer. And then I want to knock that opacity down because we're going to be drawing over the top. I just want that rough drawing to be kind of a guide. You know, I think I'm going to knock it back just a little bit more. There we go. And now I want to, uh, I want to shrink up the size of my brush a little bit. I want to get it nice and fine. I'm just going to go ahead and start drawing now and just start defining some of these details. Now I'm always using reference. Once again, here's a, here's a shot of a pretty beat up rough and tumble old lion that I saw in Africa. Um, you know, you can never have enough reference. I'll just keep on drawing here, making sure all my details are good. Okay, so we've gotten a little bit further along. Now I want to, I want to jump over to my zebra reference. And, you know, here I'm looking at the mane. You know, I really don't leave anything to chance. Even though we're making up an animal, I love to base, you know, everything that I do in reality. You know, I've, I draw, I've been drawing animals all of my life. And I still, um, you know, I'm out all the time shooting photos. Uh, I'm always drawing from life whenever I can. Um, you know, I, I, everywhere I go, whether it's the zoo, um, if I, my travels, I look, you know, that's one of the things I love to do. I love to travel and go to new places, meet new people and see new animals. And so Africa is one of my favorite places. And so I've been lucky enough to, uh, to go a couple of times and, and, you know, record those trips visually, not just from, uh, photographs, but also drawing from life. And now that's something I really want to, uh, I want to emphasize as, as I draw here. And that is drawing from life. If you know, if if you want to be a representational artist, meaning somebody that you know draws things that we're all familiar with, that's representational, and even even mixed up animals like this, they have a base in reality. Um, then one of the the best things you can do for yourself to keep your skills strong and to actually to strengthen your skills and get them stronger, and that is to draw from from life whenever you can. Um, in my case, because I do a lot of animals in my work, and that's you know some of my favorite subject matter, I go to the zoo, I go out to national parks, I go, you know, I have binoculars, I have spotting scopes, anything I can do to see animals in the wild, uh, or like I said, in captivity at the zoo, I'm always drawing whenever I can. And one of the big things about drawing from life that I try to explain to people is that, you know, when you're drawing from life, it, the act of drawing from life, it's not... It's not really about creating a great drawing, although it's fantastic if you can get one drawn. Um, but the act of drawing from life does something. What it does is that it expands your visual library. That's what I like to call it. And the way that it does that is that when you're drawing from life, you're really observing something. You're examining it. You're looking at every curve, every, every little detail. You're not merely just looking at something like, you know, if, if someone's walking through the zoo and they, and they're looking at animals and they move on to the next thing, it, that's, that's different. And you're not recording information in the same way when you're sitting and you're actually drawing your, your eye follows every contour. Like I said, every detail, every muscle, and all of that information gets recorded into your brain. And so, um, later on, like I said, even if you didn't do a good drawing in that moment, later on, when it comes time to draw whatever that object is, whether you're doing figure drawing humans, you're drawing a, a chair in your, in your room, or you're drawing a zebra out in the Serengeti, later on, you'll be able to recall those images better because you have that information stored in your brain. It's amazing what your brain can store. Um, and through repetition, it, like anything else, if you play a lot of baseball, if you if you play a lot of football, a lot of tennis, or whatever, um, through repetition, those neural pathways in our brains um, get used more and more often, and they become more and more solid, so that the action becomes much more natural. And the same goes for drawing. So it's you know the act of drawing where you're recording information, 
and and actually just the act itself where you're you're creating the image now here once again i'm not leaving anything to chance i'm looking at the rear end of that of that zebra and i'm kind of mixing it with what i know about lion anatomy and making sure that all of those muscles are coming together in the right right way and then adding those stripes and everything else on top I want to go back to drawing from life again real quick. I have one other example. Oh, actually, I'll, th this is really cool. I'm adding the, uh, the latissimus muscles. And if you look in the side of, on the side of the lines, you can see that definition going up the side there. That's that strong, you know, if you do a lot of pull-ups, um, you know, you can, we have them ourselves that kind of come out on our, on our sides. And, uh, and, you know, for the big predators, that's there to grab onto the prey and pull them in tight. But also for animals like horses and antelope and zebra, um, that's there to help them run really fast too, because that pulls the body along. But, um, but what I was going to say earlier about uh, drawing from life, one example I always use is the, is the idea of taking a five-year-old child, and if you ask them to draw a tree, um, they will usually draw two curved lines with a big squiggly line over the top and that's their idea of a tree. But if you take them outside and you sit them in a chair and you put them in front of a tree um, and tell them to look at it, um, then what they're going to do and, and draw what they see, then what they're going to do is they're going to observe and they're going to start, even at five years old, they're going to start recording that information. And then when you bring them inside and ask them to draw a tree again, all of a sudden you'll see that they draw it a little bit differently. And so that's what we do as artists. We kind of, you know, I feel we record the world around us. And, uh, and so, you know, that's, I, I, I see it as my job to kind of show the rest of the world the beauty that surrounds us. And so, you know, we can do that by, by drawing every day. So here I'm trying to finish up just a couple of the last little details in here. Um, you know, notice that I'm keeping the background very, very simple because I, you know, our, our, uh, cheetah or cheetah, our lion, uh, zebra character is kind of, uh, you know, he's very complex. And so I want him to sit against a simple background. And, uh, I just wanted to finish up a little bit of definition there in the face. Um, you also, you'll notice that I'm not hitting those stripes cause we're just going to paint right over those stripes. So I'm not too worried about that. But I just hit a couple more details, get those eyelashes in there that lions have very strongly. And I think that's it. Okay, so we've got the drawing all nice and refined. The roadmap is all set. Let's move on and start with some color.